Welcome to Women in the Arena podcast, the podcast celebrating women doing extraordinary things in plain sight. I'm your host, Audra Egan, and our mission is to elevate the value, strength, and resilience each woman brings to the world. Without further delay, let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome in, everyone, and thank you so much for being here again this week. In the month of April, we're going to be discussing each week a different facet of mental health. And yes, I understand that some of you will say that May is the Mental Health Awareness Month, and you're absolutely right. However, I think that we are at such a critical point of a need for additional resources of mental health that I wanted to start early. I wanted to get information into your hands. I wanted to get resources into your hands because I want to help as many people as I can. And I hope that if you need anything, you please let me know. So without further delay, let's start the show. Welcome in, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are continuing our conversation about how we actively support each other. And part of that is taking care of ourselves. And today I have an amazing woman here to speak about just that. Today I am joined by Chris Nurse, who is the co-founder and executive program director of Mental Wellness Unleashed. She is actually giving women the skills to carry them through their career on the path and the pace of their choosing. It is my pleasure and honor to have Chris Nurse with me. Chris Nurse, thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I just been so looking forward to our conversation, Audra. So I'm so happy to be here. I, I have too, because this is timely. 2020 has been hard. And it's been hard on all of us. Equally, it, there's been nothing that's been easy. And if if ever there was a time to discuss the topic of self-care, the time is now. Uh, but this is so such an important topic, but I want the audience to get to know you as you and, you know, beyond the resume. So, uh, Chris, let us know who you are. It's been an amazing journey. And I've I've always considered myself very blessed with family and friends that I'm surrounded with and just, just lucky in that aspect. And, you know, I, I say that up front because it's very interesting where our journey can take us and the things that life can throw at us that we don't have any control of and, and, you know, tools that we can move through that. So, you know, I, I really, I started out in the corporate world, like many of us do, or, or did, um, you know, at least individuals my age. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, but I like when I graduated from college, I still had no idea what I wanted to do. Like I didn't have a set out. I'm going to step into this job, this profession. But what what happened is I, I got my first corporate job and it was just a, an operational job where I would come in and, you know, do my widgets and whatnot. But what I found myself doing very, very quickly, which was not in my job description, was working with my peers, working with my colleagues and coaching and mentoring them like on their, on their job task. I I wanted to help them get better at what they did. I wanted them to feel good about what they did. So while I was doing my task, I was working with my peers and helping them. And it just became really organic. Next thing I know, I was building training within this team, right? Like I was, they're like, let's leverage this. Let's build these guides. Let's, can you help these folks? And that's what my, my job started to become. And then I actually officially stepped into the human resources space and stepped into learning and development. And that did become my job description. You're profession literally was born out of your passion. It it became organic and they said, hey, you're good at this and you enjoy it. So why don't you do this for us for a living? 
Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And so, and then, and then it turned bigger, right? It turned broader yeah. into not only was I developing teams or individuals, I started working on larger company programs and projects that were building the culture of the company as well. My focus then went bigger to say, now, how do we create the culture that then supports these people that we're developing? And, you know, and, and for 20 plus odd years, I really stayed within the space of human resources, but it would be about performance consulting, right? Like working with teams to say, how do we improve your holistic performance? How do we create that culture to do that? How do we continue to develop employees? How do we create employee engagement and programs that keep the employees happy? And and so that was, it was great. And I learned so much and I enjoyed it for such a long time. And then about two, three years ago, there's always a then, isn't there? <laughs> there is. There's, there's always there's a always, then. There's a then. There's always a shift. Because that's the beautiful thing about human beings is that we are ever changing. And even and, though it's yeah. something that you loved, there was and then. <laughs> correct. Correct. And the then was I began to get very tired. I began to get very frustrated more often than not. Um, I started to recognize that my stress was getting to a place that wasn't normal good stress because there is normal good stress, but it, it just, I was not enjoying what I was doing. I was starting to care less. And that scared me. That scared me because I'm like, I'm losing my joy at, at work. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal yeah. since you literally created a career that stemmed out of a passion. And then if there is this red flag coming up that's saying your passion is no longer making you happy, that's a problem. Right. And, and you know, I realize, and it, so here I am, like, this is what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. And it hit me in the face that I'm not, I'm not drinking out of my own pot, right? Like I am not, I am not doing what I'm sitting here helping everybody else do, which I also knew means I probably wasn't doing it as well as I used to either. And I just got really tired of the red tape. I got very tired of sitting with leaders who would literally, it is about, we need to check the box. The employee survey says X. So what do we need to do to throw this at it so it feels good, right? But they didn't believe it. They didn't lean into it. They didn't invest in it. And I don't even, it wasn't even talking about investing in it from a monetary or budget perspective. It was truly about investing in it as an organization and building what you say and you're telling your employees and your uh, visions and core values hanging on the wall that everybody walks around and says and sees like really believing in it and leaning in and doing it. And I just, I just got tired of fighting that battle. And, you know, and then I, and then ironically, and, and this has happened, I think to a lot of folks, obviously in the corporate space and the corporate career, there becomes the opportunity of where, you know, my role was going away in this human resources it, it, space. It does isn't that remarkable? Is it when something pops up where you initially think, "Oh my gosh, this is a horrible thing," when you actually sit in it and go, "Wait a minute, this is going to give me an opportunity to do something oh. else." You suddenly realize, "Hmm, this might be a gift." No, true story. True story. When my <laughs> leader sat across the table. And, and this was happening in the thousands, right? This wasn't a, a solo event. This wasn't just me. This was this was a big deal that was happening within the organization. And when my leader sat across from me and and shared with me and shared and did it in all the right ways. That I mean, you know, this wasn't a message she wanted to share. But when she did not. that, she herself was visibly upset. I was trying to stop myself from smiling. I, I was like, holy, 
this is exactly what I needed to happen. I was too scared to do it myself. So I needed this opportunity for me to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this opportunity. And, you know, I had to, of course, and I think I've heard one of your other wonderful guests talk about this. Like, of course, when this happens, the first thing that I do is like, okay, well, I'll just need to find another job, but I'm not, I, the first thing I said is I'm not going to find a job within this industry or within this role. I want to do something a little bit different, but that has the same impact. So I'm not going to look for training roles or things like that. I'm going to branch out. And I had great opportunities to sit down with some really cool companies and talk about some really cool roles. And I would come home from that interview, those interviews every time. And I'd look at my husband and I'd go, I just don't want to do it. And I would call them back and say, "Mm, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to move forward in this. And I could never find what that next role was for me because it didn't exist in the corporate space. So you, you had this, this, I don't know, this, this, nine in your soul, this, this reaching this, this gut feeling that there's something more that I have to do, mm-hmm. or there's something more that I want to do. And it doesn't exist in the, this corporate realm. And, and so that gave you opportunity and space to maybe go make it. Right. Because I, what I realized and like, I love corporate corporate offered me so much and it still continues to offer so much to individuals and professionals but what i what i realized every time i sat down is that there was still going to be four walls regardless of what this role was i i would have to lean in and operate and i would only like i felt like i was only being able to touch those people within those four walls i realized i needed to take my talents and be able to touch more broadly across um, you know, individuals at an individual level, right. And at across industries and across companies, like I knew I could touch more people than just within the four walls of what that role would give me, regardless of how big the company was. And I think that was my realization that, okay, this is my something different that I need to do. Um, and I'm telling you things happen for a reason. So at a networking event, run into a colleague that I had worked with years ago, realized we live fairly close together. And we said, let's just start setting up coffee and like regrouping and reconnecting because we really enjoyed working with each other personally and professionally. And we started meeting and she started telling me more of her story. And one of the things that she started talking about was mental health conditions. And I looked at her and I said, you can't have a mental health condition. You're a senior executive. You operate um, at a very high level, very stressful level. And she said, that's the stigma we need to break. And I went, wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I like, that, that, yeah. that just made my eyes go big about the, about, you're right, there's a stigma. You can still function at a very high level and still have a mental health issue. Yeah. She's like, I I just, she said, I manage it. And she said, so I've taken these tools and I implement these tools and, you know, she's telling me about these tools and I'm sitting here going, okay, you know, I don't have a, a clinical mental health condition, but if I had these tools in my arsenal, I could have been so much stronger. If I had a, a growth mindset, I could see more of the solutions versus the problems. If I didn't feel this or believe this about myself, how unlimited is my potential? If I could have had plans to align better to my purpose before and put that to work in the right way. And so we said, okay, let's do this. Like, because I, I'm like, I've got my learning and development background. I've got my passion for, for coaching and developing and making people happy. Now I have tangible tools that we can give people. And so the, it, it just, it was amazing how it just happened. And th- that's why I went, this is why I can't find a, a corporate job. This is what I'm supposed to be doing now. Because it doesn't, what you needed to create didn't exist. So now you've, you've, 
got all of this. You've got your your skills, your strengths, and your gifts powered by science, basically, with the the tools that you can teach and replicate to both individuals and to corporations, which is the now the advent of you know mental uh, wellness unleashed. That's where that started. And now you have, but now you have a roadmap of how to teach and promote self-care. Absolutely. So so first of all, define for us what self-care is. So we understand it as, as what the meaning should be. Yeah, absolutely. So self-care is, is really about taking time for ourselves, retrospect for ourselves, being very clear on what we need to do to be the best that we could be. It is about putting ourselves and our mental health and physical health first so that we are better equipped to support those around us. I, I always say self-care isn't selfish it's actually selfless. When we are stronger and healthier mentally and physically, we can provide and give so much to those around us and those that we care about and those that we work with. And so it's, it's really about implementing lifestyle habits and behaviors that keep our mindset straight, help us support and be positive and think highly of ourself, which then in turn, we organically start thinking highly of the people around us. So, but, but there's, there's these tools that you can do and do all the time. And like, listen, one thing I want to make very clear is I I am not a kumbaya type of person. I am not, (laughs) I'm not, which like, I, I don't, I don't have to sit around and hug everybody and we're not sitting around a campfire and singing songs. I am not happy every day. I, I have days where things hit you like a brick. Life throws things at you that you cannot control. I've had situations, you know, in my life to where I can say I have been depressed for a couple of weeks because of challenges that life throws at you. But what self-care allows us to do, and when we practice it for ourselves, it helps us regroup. It helps us rebound faster. It helps us regain momentum. It helps us readjust, right? Well, here's, that's a perfect, that that's actually a perfect example. And I'm going to be transparent because that's, that's what I do here. Um, I will tell you that right before I got on the recording with Chris this afternoon, I've had a, I've had a challenging day. I I have definitely had a challenging day. And uh, I openly admitted that to Chris saying, it's been, it's been a little rough. And she said, do you not want to do this? I said, no, because this gives me joy. What I do want to do is take a couple of deep deep breaths and reset myself. And I will tell you that that is not a skill that I came equipped with. That is a skill that I have acquired because I needed to learn how to reset myself. And, and I was able to do that and be able to open myself up to enjoying this this experience rather than bring with me the stress of my afternoon. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's what you're saying about part of the tools that we need to learn. Absolutely. And it's so you, you hit it right on the head. We can learn like the beauty about self-care and building what we call our mental strength, right? The beauty of that is you can develop it. You can grow it. You can, you have to practice it. Our, our mind, our brain is a muscle. Just like we develop our biceps, our triceps, whatever it is we develop, we, we can develop our mind. And like, 
you know, I used to look at folks that were very successful, um, whether they were, you know, in the, in the limelight, like, um, you know, your Oprah's or people that do startup companies and they become, they just take the small company and they make it really big. Right. I used to, or high executives who, you know, I admired within the work and I'd watch how they'd influence and do their job and they would do it well and they would do it in all the right ways. And I'd be like, I can never, I can never be that because I think that's just naturally in them. Well, what I learned is no, it's not. They spend time, they work on it. They think about their mindset. They put things to practice to create that and live that every day. And so that tells me anybody can do it if you put the work in to do it. So, so, and this is, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time to learn in our 30 minute show, but what are some basic skills that we can learn and learn right away and and take away from our conversation? What are some basic skills of self-care and being able to strengthen that muscle, if you will, to reset your mindset? Yeah. So I would say one that I lean into a lot and I kind of call it the starter pack. (laughs) It's the starter pack. (laughs) It's really about eliminating our self-limiting beliefs because the reality is we all have them. And so there's really a three-step process to do it. And then the, then there's a tool that supports this process. So the first so step I believe in, that's now called in, imposter syndrome. I think that that's the new buzzword probably, of why, what they call yeah, that now. Probably. Yeah. Like, you know, you're not living your authentic self and, and so on and so forth, but we sabotage ourselves is really what's happening. Right. So yeah. the first thing that you really have to do is you have to sit down and you have to identify them. And what that means is you literally sit down, take a pen and paper and you write out all of the negative thoughts you have about yourself, all of the things that you feel are holding you back, what skills you don't feel that you have that you want to have to be able to do whatever that is next. You make a list and you write it all out on paper because then that makes it real. So you put it in the physical universe so you can read it. So you can read it and you can, and you can say out loud to yourself, um, I'll give you mine. I felt that I was very plain Jane, very vanilla in the aspect of like, I didn't have anything big to offer truly the people around me to make the world a better place. Now I say that to say, this isn't because anyone made me feel like that. In fact, everybody in my life has been super supportive, super proud of everything I've done, small or big great friends, great circle of friends, great opportunities. But I, I, I was just like, I can't do anything really big to change the world, right? Like, it's just not who I am. Like I said, I thought some folks were just born with it. Um, and I realized that that was a limiting belief, which is probably also why I stayed within my safe, comfortable corporate space as long as I did, right? Because I'm good at what I'm doing and I'm just doing, but I was still a number within a big group of people. Right. Right. Um, and you know, when I, when I actually said that out loud to myself and I was like, okay, why do I feel this way? Well, because I see all these really cool people doing these cool things and they're big, right? They're big people. They're big personalities. They're probably smarter than I am. So on and so forth. I started researching them. And I'm like, I started to learn all the things that they were doing to be as successful and change the world the way they are. And, you know, their support mechanism around them. I'm like, well, they're just like me. Like, and so, so the first step is you identify it. The second step is then you seek to understand why and where this, this is coming from. Um, you know, for me, it wasn't people that created that belief for me. That happens a lot. It will happen. You may recognize that the people in your life have created these self-limiting beliefs for you, not because they wanted to, it just could have been the environment that you were in, right? I mean, we all have childhood traumas and, you know, yeah. our, each each generation learns 
from the mistakes of the one before and tries to do a better job. Um, yeah. You know, and, and so there's things that you learn as a kid that, that unfortunately, because you learn, learn them as a kid, they make impressions in your brain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, a lot of times it's not, it's not because it's out of malice. It's just, it's just the way it is. So it's, so then once you understand why and where these are coming from, you can better grasp how to shift it. And so that's three. So you sit down, you've made this list. And believe me, like when I first made my laundry list, it was long. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> once, I, once I got rolling, it was long. So the other thing is you can't, you're not going to. So you're telling me it, was, it wasn't It was just a list. It was a scroll. Is what yeah. you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I said, okay, which ones do I want to tackle first? Why, what is more important to me to make this shift and eliminate this belief? And yeah, because it'd be overwhelming to try and tackle yeah. them all at once. I mean, that would probably make you feel worse. Yeah. Um, and so. So then you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm going to shift this. What do I want this to be? What, what is my new real truth? What is my new real reality? Now, the key to this is once you do this, and, and this is the tool we have, we call it our before and now statement, right? So once you've done the self-reflection, once you've recognized and really kind of dug deep, you do this before and now statement and you have to post it and you, and you say it to yourself every day. And believe me, you don't believe it. You don't believe it at first, but you just force yourself to keep saying it until one day you don't realize it, but you believe it. And it just is. It is your new reality. And you start doing the things in your life, surrounding yourself with the tools and the resources you need to make that shift from your before to your now statement. Um, Interesting. So a before statement and a now statement. That's, yes. that's really fascinating because, as you said before, if you can build a physical muscle, you could build your brain muscle, too. And that's how you do it. That's yes. that is not only is that encouraging, but that is remarkable. And we tell us more. So when you successfully implement this before and now statement, you are actually debunking your own junk. It's oh. as simple as that. You're you're basically unloading your own baggage? Yeah. I oh my gosh. like I kept this junk for myself, right? I just debunked it. It doesn't exist anymore. That's not that's not who I am. That's not who I am anymore, and that's not where I need to go. So you so shifted. you so you've shifted this, and and now you're in a much better um, mindset, uh, w which I believe you refer to as growth mindset. Correct, uh, because now it, this allows you to open up and see the possibilities. So now that you've been able to shift your brain, um, this is life. That we are imperfect humans. In yes. an imperfect world, what, what number one? What happens when you backslide? Because it happens. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Uh, listen, I'm going to be transparent too, since you were Audra. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I backslide. Okay, so my self limiting belief was I can't do anything truly impactful to change my true environment. Like I've seen other people be able to do. I've debunked that junk. I have now stepped out and I know and I do make a difference with what we're doing. And they're big differences and they're small differences. I don't care about the size of the difference. But honestly, probably once a month, I get up and go, oh God, I can't, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like, I don't know if I am making a difference. <laughs> I, I, well, thank, thank goodness you just, yeah, thank goodness you just said that out loud because uh, probably about once a month, I tell myself, what am I doing? Yeah. Who am I? Who, who am I? What Wait. am I doing? Yeah. Um, but I have to pull that tool back out. I pull out my before and now. 
I say it again. And I, and then I've, you know, I now have started to make an action plan and I visit my action plan, right? Like this is, these are the steps I'm going to do. So if I'm feeling this way, why am I feeling this way? What do I need to do to tackle it? So yes, that feeling still happens, but I rebound a lot faster than I used to. That's for dang sure. Um, and I just, I put it back into my control. I take the control back that I feel like I've lost. Um, and I do that by, I go to my, my plan and I say, okay, if I don't think I can do this because, um, we lost a client or our technology broke and I'm wasting my time here. This is, you know, th- those are real examples. Um, I just have to regroup. I just regroup faster, but it's something I have to sit down, allow myself to do. And I have to allow myself to feel that way. I, it's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel depressed for a while. We just can't stay there. And that's what these self-care tools help us do. So what you're, what you're saying is that, I mean, many of us are, are familiar with action plans. Many of us are familiar mm-hmm. with business plans. Many of us are, are familiar with home plans. I mean, if you do a remodel, you put in a pool, what right. have you, there has yeah. to be a plan. So what you're telling me is that if there's a plan for everything else, then yeah. there should be a plan for your mental health. Yeah. Make a list. What do you want to do? Um, you know, we call it uh, with a lot of our programs, we give a toolkit. And so you get to put to practice these tools, but you also get a toolkit. What I will also say is that the biggest resource that we as humans have is each other. And so just because this is about self care, it also doesn't mean we have to do it ourselves. And you know, part of this toolkit is finding what we call that person in our tribe that if I have to pick up the phone and go, talk me out of quitting, talk me (laughs) out of quitting, right? Like remind me of who I am, what I am, what I bring to the table, whatever that question is that you're questioning yourself about, you have that person, you have that tribe, or maybe it's a book, or maybe it's an app, or maybe it's a, um, uh, YouTube, or maybe it's a wonderful podcast, right? What do you need to kick you back in the butt and go, okay, I got this, right? Like so, I can do this. So have that on your plan. And, and just, just for note, if I call any of you and say, talk me off the ledge, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Help me regroup. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying, put this in your toolkit, put this in your plan. This is how you have a growth mindset. This is how you make sure that you're mentally healthy. And this is how you invest in your self-care. Now, l- let me shift this just slightly because like I said, this is, we're, we're dedicating some time to how we uplift others. And and it's been said before, I, Faizun said this a couple weeks ago, and that's why we're having this conversation is that if your cu- your cup is empty, you can't fill somebody else's cup which is what Chris is trying to teach us is how we fill our own cup. But now we shift this a little bit. How do we now translate that into supporting each other, filling each other's cup? Absolutely. So, so I talked about that tribe, right? Which is what is one of the most important things. And so when you are mentally strong, you, you see it in others. You, 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 you see where others need help. I can so now quickly recognize when someone is operating within their self-limiting belief, when they're holding themselves back, I start asking, I just start talking to them. I don't, I don't have to give them the physical tool in that moment. I just start having a conversation with them going, so why do you think you can't do this? Or um, what is what is holding you back and why do you think that is? What do you want it to be? And it's just, it's part of that conversation. You create that support, you create that tribe. And the next thing you know, their, their mindset is starting to shift some. Um, and listen, in the past couple of months, we've sat down with several women and listen, we are the worst at this. I'm sorry. When it comes to, I think self-care, 
I see us as women, we are nurturing. We put everybody before us. We right now during COVID, women are giving a hundred percent of themselves to work, a hundred percent to home, a hundred percent to family, a hundred percent to friends, and a hundred percent to community. And now more than ever, we as women have to remind ourselves we have to stop, take a breath, and regroup, or we are not, we're not helping our family and our friends like we actually really could. We're not being successful in doing that. And so, you know, I urge women to pay attention to their friends right now um, and really check in and say, how are you doing and what do you need from me in support of this? That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Um, I, I can only speak for myself that I have weeks that are crazy. And almost every single day, I say at least once, what day is it? Yes. Because because everything is running together. Um, and um, honestly, I, I feel m- more tired now more often than I ever have, uh, which is interesting because, you know, I, I haven't really done what I typically do, which is, you know, traveling all the time and, and constantly being on the go in that regard. Right. But I'm here juggling multiple hats simultaneously. And I drop the ball sometimes. Actually, Absolutely. I drop the ball a lot. I drop the ball a lot, if you want to know the truth. Um, but I think that's a very powerful statement that you said is because if I'm doing this, I know that you're probably doing this. And uh, others are doing this. Friends are doing this. Neighbors, sisters, what have you. We need an opportunity to stop, take a deep breath, and check in on each other because maybe that's yeah. exactly what we need. Right. And But we have to be strong in doing this. So this isn't about, like like Faizun had said in in one of your earlier podcasts, like, I can't give you anything if I don't have anything to give. So we need to make sure that we're in a place because we do want to support those around us. And that's why I say self-care isn't selfish. It's selfless. We have to take care of ourselves so we can take care of others. We've got to, we've got to refill our own tanks because we are doing so much. And there are so many people that are depending on us because we are critical. We are absolutely critical in so many different ways. Uh, So the point is, is take care of yourself. Take these tools that Chris has taught us. These are basic tools that we can do right now and start shifting how you feel about yourself. Yes. This has been invaluable because this has been a tough year. It has been tough front to back, upside down and backwards. It has been a tough year. So that is why I wanted Chris to come and talk to us about how to take care of ourselves and reset, take a step back so we can step forward and keep on going. So Chris, thank you for that. Of course. Um, So before I let you go, one final statement to the audience. Anybody listening right now, Just close your eyes. And I just want you to imagine if you let go of who you aren't and become who you are, who would that be? What would you do? Wow. That is an amazing visualization exercise, which I'm going to try. I'm going to try that when I'm having those moments or even when I'm not having those moments that I need to reset. Um, thank you. Thank you for giving us that opportunity to learn. Uh, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for talking about this topic, which is incredibly important, timely and sensitive. So thank you so much for being here and doing this. Of course. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you again next time. And that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for being here. I can never give you enough gratitude because without all of you, none of this is possible. I am still always in awe that my guests 
are volunteering to be so bold in their vulnerability. So thank you for continuing to do that. And to my audience, audience isn't the right word to describe you. So to you, I thank you. You are a community. So thank you for being a part of this community. And thank you for helping to nurture it and make it grow. And of course, you know, I have this incredible team behind me that helps me produce this every single week. For Savannah, Alan, Jessica, Tina, Tisha, and my son, Gavin, thank you so much for believing in me, believing in my mission, and continuing to help grow the Women in the Arena podcast. Thank you all so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. That's our show. I am so grateful for each and every one of you and your unwavering support and your continued belief in this movement that has become much bigger than me, much bigger than just a podcast. It has become this forward momentum that we are all doing together. If you are ready or you know somebody that is, that is ready to tell your story and share your value with the world, please connect with me. You can reach me at audra at womeninthearena.net. I am so honored and thankful that you will share your story with me and I'll make sure that it is well taken care of. I will never stop thanking each and every one of you and I cannot wait to talk to you again next week as we share another woman's story and we celebrate her doing extraordinary things in plain sight. We'll see you next time.